Hey folks, uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of our lab one. Uh, it's not gonna be quite the same uh, as what you're gonna be doing because I've already installed a bunch of things, but hopefully it will at least be helpful. So I'm going to assume, I'm gonna kind of skip the first parts and assume that you've been able to install Quarto and install VS Code and install R. Uh, that's kind of three big things uh, that you may not have done uh, successfully but hopefully, uh, hopefully that's all gone okay and you've been able to open VS Code. So uh, I'm just looking right now at the, um, the uh, wiki instructions and I'm just gonna follow them. So create a folder on your computer called COM411labs. I already did that. I just call it COM411. Download lab one, I actually haven't done that yet. Uh, so I know you can't see this part of my screen, but right now I'm just right clicking on that link and doing save link as, and I'm gonna save it right to, the, to that same folder that I just created. Um, okay, and I'll show it to you in just a second. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna open VS Code. Uh, the next thing it says to click the extensions icon. That's this icon right now, sorry, right here. Um, and what you're gonna do is install Quarto, which I already have, but you'll, what you'll do is just look for Quarto right here. Uh, mine says reload required, that's fine. So let's just reload it, I must have updated. I'll show you, that just reloaded Visual Studio real quick. So I'm gonna search for Quarto. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make this all a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Um, so I'll search for Quarto, find it here. I'll click on it, it'll say install right here. Just like these ones say install, it'll say install, and you just click install. That'll install Quarto. Uh, the other thing you need to find is the R, just type R. And there's the R extension. Again, I already have it installed. If you hadn't done it yet, you just have to click install um, and it'll be there for you. So uh, those are the two main extensions we'll need. We might install some more later. In fact, if you want to install Copilot, uh, you're welcome to do that. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get this working. Uh, so this is like an AI helper for your code. So same thing, you just click install and install it. That's all there is to it. Uh, for for Copilot, you'll have to sign up. We'll talk about this. You'll have to sign up for an, uh, a student account, um, et cetera. So it's a little bit more complicated. But um, yeah, but you can still install it even if you aren't setting it up yet. Okay, so we've done that. Now in VS Code, so we'll, we'll close this. Uh, we'll click, maybe the easiest is actually just to click the Explorer, click Open Folder. And then it'll, depending on your, I don't know how it works in different operating systems, but in mine it just opened up a, a window. So I'm gonna find the, the folder that I just created and where I just downloaded the, the file. So it is right here. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna click open and it's gonna open up that folder. And you should, oh yeah, you should see this. Uh, I'm gonna say I trust the authors um, because I'm the author of it and I trust myself. So you should see this. It should say COM411 uh, or COM411 labs or whatever and lab1 r1 markdown.qmd. So you're gonna open that. Um, I actually had you, I, I changed the instructions. So now they say, so it should open here and it should be highlighted. This is because we installed the Quarto uh, plugin. That should be working. What we do next um, instead of rendering, which is what I had, I had in the original instructions, I think it's a little bit easier because it won't quite work yet for you. So you click new terminal. That'll open a terminal at the bottom here. Yours won't look quite as fancy as mine, that's fine. Um, and then you just type the capital letter R and push enter. I know this didn't, oh, this didn't actually work on Windows. So maybe another option. Here, let's do that. Let's close the terminal. This should work no matter what. In fact, I'll change the instructions to say this as well. Just find this first cell. So you'll have to scroll down just a little bit to this first one and click run cell. If you do that, this will open up an R terminal. See how it says R right here? That means you're in an R terminal. Um, it might say it over here instead when it's a little bit bigger. Anyway, it should say R somewhere. That's when you're, you know you're in an R terminal. It also has this like carrot, this sideways kind of greater than symbol. Um, so once we're here, copy and paste from the wiki this installation. I am not going to do it because I already have these installed, which again, uh, 
Okay, should look like this. Okay, should look like that. I am, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not gonna do it because I've already installed them. Uh, speaking of which, this hopefully this will be the only time you ever have to run this. Once you've installed it, it should install to your computer and you don't have to do it again. If you do it, try and do it again, it'll take a long time and it'll, it'll just reinstall all of them. Um, all right, fine, I'll reinstall, I'll reinstall one just to show you uh, one thing that you'll have to do. Oops. Darn it. All right, let's see. I think I messed up how I highlighted it. I'll try and copy and paste it again. I'm just doing some weird things. Okay, that's all right. We're about there. All right, so I'm just going to install. Let's just do high graph data. That'll be fine. I'm going to push enter. Oh, it did it automatically. You may get something right there that asks you what um, CRAN mirror you want. You can just select one. It'll be, probably be a little faster if you select the US. If it, if it shows up, I know, again, in different operating systems, I think in Windows, a window pops up and you select the one you want. On a Mac, I think it just says it all here and you have to type like, I want number 70. So you just type 70 there and push enter and it will install. If it installs correctly, you should see it sort of scroll by just like I, just like you just saw on my computer. Um, and it should say all of this stuff. And ideally at the end, it says done. And then the package that installed. So if it all worked, and hopefully it does, then it should, uh, then it should say done. Um, and then this, if you install all of those packages, it'll take a while. A few of them actually take a long time. So it could take, I mean, really five, to 10 minutes, um, depending on the speed of the internet connection and the speed of the computer you're using. Once that's done, you should be able to click render at the top here. And it will do this other cool, crazy thing. Um, it'll start this quarto window down here. And ideally, there we go, it's running through this. It will create a preview window here. Let me make this just a little bit bigger for me. Oh darn it, it's making it smaller for you. All right, hopefully you can still see everything. Um, oh, why is that not working? It might, I might have made this too, um, too zoomed in. Let me see if that's the, the problem. Where do I change that? Uh, I just saw this. Appearance. No, darn it. Where did I see this? Sorry, let me pause this really quick and see if I can figure it out. Sorry, you shouldn't have to suffer through this with me. Okay, sorry about that. This is, it's actually been a long time in my time, uh, even though I know it's just one second for you. I, I realized a small problem, which is fixed now. So if you're in a future class, you won't have this problem, but but uh, the link that I saved did not have a title and an author, nor this format thing. So uh, if you re-download it, it'll have that. If you figure it out before that, you know you don't need to worry about it. Or you could just add something like this. This is called a header, a YAML header. We'll, we can talk a little bit more about it. All of the files should have this. It's three dashes, and it has title and author, and you can write your name there. And then format, which is kind of the default format that it should go to. Um, but you can uh, hopefully render as HTML. That's what you should be able to do at this point. If you try to render as PDF, which is what we eventually want to get to, it probably will not work. Um, so you can try that. Um, it will probably not work. Sorry, let me get back to uh, lab one so I can get to where we are. So if you try it, I will, I will try it. So you click down and then render PDF. Um, and I think it will work for me because I've installed the things that I need to, but it probably won't work for you. Um, and so if that doesn't work, which it, again, it probably will not, um, I'll show you what it looks like once it does work so that you can see kind of doing all this fancy stuff. And then we have a beautiful PDF document here. Um, what, if it doesn't work, which again, it probably won't, uh, you'll have to have a, a terminal and it's a little bit complicated because this terminal is actually running our HTML version, so our other preview version. And so you can just click plus here for a new terminal and then type in quarto 
install tiny tech or tiny text. Push enter, and it should say this. Right, install loading tiny tech, and it will install for you. Uh, I've already installed it, but we'll just let it do it again uh, while we work on the next thing. So at that point, oh yes. Um, should I mention? Oh yeah, there we go. I, good, so step 12, which I skipped for the sake of this, is to look through and do everything that it asks you to do. So once you've rendered it, um, so for example, uh, well, we can look at the PDF one. Just read it over here. So you can read, you know, this is a court to a notebook, making documents, and it has some exercises. So if the first exercise is rendering it as HTML, so we did that. The second is trying to render it as PDF. We did that as well. So that actually was the first exercise. The next exercise, the exercise is to create a paragraph explaining what you hope to get out of the class. So look, if you look over on the left side here, we can see here's where that text is. So the exercise, this is the header, and then here's a paragraph. So now you create your own header and paragraph. Um, and then the next step is looking at executing code. So this is a piece of code. We did this already, but you can click Run Cell, and that will run it. And you can see down here, here's the output. So uh, it takes these numbers and calculates the mean of them. Uh, I did it by clicking Run Cell. You can also do uh, Control Shift Enter, and that will run it as well. So try to involve those. Uh, the next thing that I, that we can do. So um, yeah, so you can create a new code block with code control shift I. So if we're in here, we can, here, let's go past this one. And I can just do control shift I and it will create a new, I can click R because we're always gonna be using R, uh, a new R code block. And then I can write code in there. So uh, yeah, so that's how you do control shift I. As you can tell, it's just text as well. So the other option is you can just write it. Back tick, so this is right next to escape, right under escape, back tick, back tick, back tick, R, and then enter, enter, back tick, back tick, back tick. And now we have code there. You can see uh, it's trying to, this this text that's appearing there is uh, GitHub Copilot trying to help me with some code. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, and you probably won't see that because we haven't set that up yet. Okay, so if we uh, run this cell, uh, it will show a, uh, some output, maybe off to the side. If you look over here, here's the output in our document. And notice we had echo equals false and message equals false. So this doesn't show the code, unlike up here where it shows the code that we wrote. Um, in this, this time it doesn't show the code. So you should create your own code block below, copy and paste hist iris petal length into that code block, and you should see a histogram. Uh, of that. So create a code block and do that. Um, and then lastly, I actually think we already did install iGraph, so hopefully you don't have to do that. Um, in fact, I need to update this. This is a little bit off because we're not using our studio either, so I apologize for that. I'll update this text. Um, hopefully you've already installed this. Should it, That part should be done. Um, but we're going to use it now. So the next bit is to create a code block and paste this into it. So you take this and basically right now this is just text, put it into a code block. And again, this is a code block, right? It should be grayed out, should say run cell. So create one of those, just like I told you, control shift I will do it, type it out, that'll do it as well. And then put this into it and it will show a network plot. So that's about it, hopefully that is helpful. And then when you're done, uh, render the PDF uh, when you're done with rendering the PDF, I should show you this as well. Um, this may look a little different for you, but there should be something like download. So you can download the PDF. It also exists right here. It created it. This is the PDF that we were looking at. That's probably the easier way. It's in that same folder. So you just upload that to Brightspace. Hopefully that's helpful um, and good luck.